71% of the Earth's surface is water, and almost 97% of that is salt water. Currently, 22 nations in the world are recognized as archipelagic states, and this unique multi-island nation can include several cultures, religions, languages, geopolitical histories, and that's within their own territorial boundaries. Open seas, littoral regions, beach landings. This isn't the first time the U.S. Army has talked about the importance of operations in a maritime domain. Joint Doctrine defines the maritime domain as the oceans, seas, bays, estuaries, islands, coastal areas, and the airspace above all of these, which includes the littoral region. This domain overlaps with the land domain in the seaward segments of those littoral regions. Maritime capability can be global, regional, territorial, and because of the overlapping region between the land and littoral, maritime capabilities can also include things like coastal self-defense. While most tend to think of the maritime domain as the purview of the U.S. Navy to conduct deterrence, maintain operational access, sea control, power projection, maritime security, you still need a land force, a land force with some endurance, and that's absolutely crucial to sustaining maritime operations for longer periods of time. Operations that Army forces can anticipate in a maritime environment still include things like offense, defense, and stability, but these tasks become a little more unique. Airborne entry operations to islands, amphibious landings, port opening, intra and inter theater transportation using Army watercraft, or even protection support to larger joint operations, things like providing theater, air, and ballistic missile defense from an island. So, Here's a fun fact for you. There were 22 U.S. divisions deployed to the Pacific Theater in World War II, far more than the U.S. Marine Corps. And this forced the Army to learn some critical skills about airborne operations to highly restrictive terrain, contested beach landings, ship to shore movement, casualty exchange on beaches to medical ships, resupply to remote islands over extended distances, and even combat operations on Arctic archipelagos. Fighting on islands has traditionally been seen the business of Marines. And a great deal of our joint doctrine comes from their continued effort to prepare for joint operations in maritime dominant environments. It's a good thing. And now the U.S. Army is continuing that discussion, which is absolutely critical to ensuring joint success in any environment, even one that happens to have water. If you want to know more about land forces roles in the maritime environment, you can definitely start with chapter seven of our new FM 30 operations, where there is a wealth of information that links you out to joint sister service and supporting army specific doctrine. Try JP332 for maritime operations, JP302 for amphibious operations, and by all means check out the Army Publishing Directorate's website for a plethora of technique specific doctrine for army sustainment and support to maritime operations.